when we started, the interest was not there. And uh, it was very difficult to get people to be interested in the Gambia first and to support our, our cause. Uh, because President Jami had many friends, especially in the sub-region, especially here in Senegal. And also the relationship between the two countries was a very stressful relationship. And what I was able to do with Article 19 over the past 15 years around Gambia is quite interesting for me uh, in personally because it enables me really to focus on an issue that was most critical in my country, freedom of expression with all the different ram uh, angles, supporting journalists in terms of training, security, uh, uh, training especially, but importantly pushing the African Commission uh, uh, to put Gambia on its agenda, which was something that was a big marathon. So what I did is to ensure that Every session Gambia is on our agenda and it was something that I really took upon myself to say I can't be a Gambian heading an institution that is defending freedom of expression that is coming to this commission and continue to talk about Eritrea, Zimbabwe, Tunisia and not to speak about my own country. And there were times when I just decided and I'm happy also that my organization allowed me to do that to say that my only focus will be Gambia. What we did last year, it was also like a great, I think that was the first time we have local, I would say victims. People came and spoke out about their ordeals. They spoke publicly about what they went through uh, in, the, in the hands of the security forces. Uh, the commissioners, two of them, the chairperson and the commissioner in charge of the Gambia spoke publicly about the need for the elections to be transparent, the need for the government to release those prisoners. And really, it was really a turning point for us. And uh, with a coalition of other human rights organizations, I think we, managed, we had more than 60 people in that room. And it was a very, 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 very historic event that for the first time in Gambian soil, we have civil society organization, both nationally and internationally, and regionally and the commission itself four commissioners were there they all spoke firmly and also raised their concern for us this was very important i would just like to reiterate one thing we all know that rape is also something that preoccupies all these human rights bodies and we have disturbing information that those women politicians have been sexually assaulted and some have been raped and resolution 1325, I think, is very clear on that. I hereby take this opportunity to congratulate Mr. Adam Barrow for his victory. It's a clear victory because our system says a, clear, a simple majority. I wish him all the best. And I wish you all, uh, I wish all Gambians the best. So a page is torn. I said, everybody was, where I was, people were crying. You know, it was so emotional. We were all crying. It was so deep and so emotional. And the way it was done, so, so, with the, with the gravity to come that, yes, he didn't come and announce the result, but to come and announce that the president, you see, like, the whole thing, so I was not too sure still, I say, with Jame, we have to wait. So everybody came, people say, oh, we are coming to interview you about this. I say, no, no, we have to wait now until the announcement is made to be able to talk about, because he can change his mind anytime. I hereby reject the results in totality. Let me repeat, I will not accept the results based on what has happened? That time was really, really stressful for all of us because it was again a time where we had to balance a lot of imperatives. Gambians have spoken and many people were hesitant that, of course, when the Security Council announced that, you know, uh, this is going to happen, ECOWAS and all of those people, we knew that 
there were different options. Either he steps down or people will organize and the military option was already on the table. But obviously we know it's not something that is just easy. But people across the region, especially here, I think he managed to create an impression that there might be war in the Gambia. So whoever, and we've seen also just overnight, all specialists on Gambia, people talking about the elections, how uh, these things are not clear, that, you know, why is it that we are not allowing Jame to, to use the Supreme Court, and they don't know our system, they never research the system, so you have a lot of journalists, a lot of commentators, really trying to justify his position. And at some stage, I felt alone. We were few of us here who could speak out in the Senegalese media in French, but also with at least some level of knowledge of how the elections work in the Gambia and, and, and the rest. You ne vous attendez pas à une décision avant la date fatidique du 19 janvier, date retenue pour la passation de pouvoir. Je pense c'est du bluff et personne ne prête attention à, à ce processus. C'est un processus illégitime qui est contraire à la Constitution. Vous savez, lorsque vous avez une juridiction qui ne siège pas depuis un an et demi, pour cause, les juges n'ont pas été nommés. Et c'est votre responsabilité vous-même parce qu'il a refusé, il a démantelé cette justice pendant toutes ces années et il n'a pas voulu qu'il y ait une cour suprême pour que les citoyens aient recours. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes devant cette impasse et il veut recréer cette cour, je pense, sur le plan du droit pur et sur le plan même de la légitimité, ce n'est pas possible. So we continue the media actions and we continue the other part of the work to ensure that across the media here, we tell the story of Gambia and we tell people how dangerous it is to go back to, to the pools and also how dangerous it is to even trust Jame one second. And I think that was also something that we insisted on. We can't. He's not somebody to be trusted.